Now really, an object weighing billions of times the mass of our Sun must be easy to find, right? Wrong. Unfortunately, it might not be that simple. Like in the case with a missing black hole. But let's travel to the galaxy cluster Abel 2261, hosting a supermassive black hole at its center. Or at least, that's where it's supposed to be. The main problem is this giant space phenomenon is nowhere to be found. Now, supermassive black holes are mega-monsters, churning slowly at the center of their home galaxies. They gather tremendous clouds of gas and dust around them, which makes them swell up to sizes the human mind can't begin to imagine. If a supermassive black hole, like the one that dwells at the center of our home Milky Way galaxy, moved even a little bit closer to our solar system, we'd be doomed. The distance between this huge thing and Earth could be several dozens of light years, and still, it would wreak havoc on our planet. Earth, along with other things making up the solar system, would be tugged into the black hole's orbit and doomed to spin around it for eternity or longer. Hey, who knows, right? So, it's good that such black holes stay away from us at the moment. So, let's see what happened to that runaway supermassive black hole from that gigantic cluster of galaxies around 2.7 billion years away from our planet. Scientists have been looking for it with the help of NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory and Hubble Space Telescope. But so far, no result. The main problem with finding a black hole is that it's, uh, well, black. And space is, you guessed it, black too. So there's no contrast whatsoever that could help astronomers spot the hole. But scientists haven't given up yet. After all, they have a lot of other technologies to find black holes, small and big, in the vastness of space. Some of these methods involve watching the stars orbiting black holes. Sometimes, it's a faint gravitational wave signal which is produced when two black holes collide. But the most reliable technique is watching dust and gas falling to their doom. The thing is, black holes are space objects with insane gravity. So, regions of space surrounding them are usually a bit chaotic, gas and dust getting pulled into the bottomless abyss, compressing and heating up. In the process, it releases a flood of X-ray radiation. So, astronomers look for extremely bright X-ray sources in the universe. Chances are, those are the last gasps of giant clumps of material before they disappear into a black hole. Then, why can't scientists find such X-ray signatures left by the black hole in Abel 2261? One of the most mysterious things about its disappearance is that radio telescopes have spotted some signs of massive plumes of superheated material launched at one point within the last 50 million years. These plumes were most likely caused by a large black hole, which is nowhere to be found these days. So, at the moment, we can only play a guessing game. Maybe two medium-sized black holes collided, pushing the newly merged giant out of the center of the galaxy. The observations of the stars in that galaxy have shown a clump of dense material a few thousand light-years away from the galaxy's core. Maybe it's the runaway black hole. But disappointingly, no X-ray signals are coming from that clump. Or the hole might still be there in its rightful place. But it's, you know, slumbering. If it doesn't get a fresh supply of gas and dust, it has nothing to feed on. As a result, it can't release a flood of x-rays. But again, the answer, do not disturb, the black hole is sleeping now, isn't very satisfying. Why isn't it getting its space food? What happened 50 million years ago? What is that clump of material speeding away from the galaxy center? So many questions, and no answers so far. At least, we know what black holes look like. Well, kinda. It's actually the shadow of a black hole's event horizon, visible against the glowing superheated material falling inside the hole. The first ever mugshot of a black hole appeared in 2019. But the data for its creation was collected in 2017. It took an international team, consisting of more than 200 astronomers, two years to assemble the image. We can admire this amazing space phenomenon thanks to a vast global network of telescopes called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or simply EHT. Why such a name? The thing is that the Event Horizon is a point of no return on the outskirts of a black hole. When something, for example, matter, radiation, or light, reaches this boundary, 
there is no way for it to escape the black hole's clutches. Anyway, to capture that very first image of a black hole, scientists created a virtual telescope that turned out as big as our planet by combining the power of eight powerful radio telescopes. But it wasn't an easy feat. The researchers had to simultaneously point the telescopes in a meticulously planned order with the help of precise atomic clocks set on each telescope. Plus, to keep the chances of rain and bad weather to a minimum, they even constructed the telescopes in super dry regions, such as the Atacama Desert in Chile and the South Pole. On each observation day, the telescope gathers roughly 350 terabytes of data. That's 10 times the amount of data collected every day at the Large Hadron Collider. But let's speak more about black holes themselves. There are stellar black holes, smaller but even more dangerous than their supermassive peers. They appear when stars that have run out of their star food fall into themselves. If a star used to be big enough, it keeps compressing and compressing some more, and voila! A baby stellar black hole is born. But even if I call such a hole a small one, it's still five to several tens of times heavier than the Sun. Unlike their massive siblings, hypothetical mini black holes could be really tiny, not bigger than an atom. Even so, just one minuscule thing would have the mass of a thousand SUVs. One theory claims tons of micro black holes could have been created right after the Big Bang and the beginning of the universe. Some scientists even go as far as to say that a couple mini black holes pass through our planet every day. There is a supermassive black hole smack dab in the middle of our galaxy, the Milky Way. Its name is Sagittarius A star, and it's 4.3 million times as heavy as the Sun. And nope, we aren't going to be pulled into this hole. It's more than 26,000 light years from Earth, too far to have any influence on our planet. By the way, recently, astronomers have discovered that this supermassive black hole might be leaking. If it's true, it probably means that Sagittarius A star isn't a sleeping giant, as previously thought. It might still be active. And the leakage recorded by scientists may be the hole hiccuping while swallowing clouds of gas. Maybe we should burp this baby? If you ever find yourself near a black hole, hmm get ready that time will significantly slow down. It may work for you if you aren't eager to grow older. Just don't let yourself be tugged beyond the point of no return. Another danger of hanging around a black hole is that it might start behaving like a massive galactic volcano. From time to time, black holes flare up, but instead of spewing lava, they produce enormous amounts of energy, and it makes gaping holes in the surrounding material and gas. A short time ago, scientists discovered one of the largest craters in the universe. Radio and X-ray telescopes detected a supermassive black hole that threw a temper tantrum many, many years ago. It happened in a galaxy cluster about 390 million light years away from Earth. The crater left behind, which was actually a hole punched in the cluster's hot gas, could fit 15 Milky Way galaxies. Okay, mind blown, I'm out of here. There's this mysterious thing in space, an unusual spot that scientists haven't been able to explain for more than 15 years. There are different theories, and one of them says that maybe this is an imprint from a collision with a parallel universe. Is this true? Well, let's see. Take a look at this map. This is the map of our universe. Well, not really. This is actually the map of cosmic microwave background radiation or simply CMB. Many, many billions of years ago, there was a big bang. It was so powerful that it created our entire universe. And of course, such an event couldn't occur without leaving some consequences. And these consequences are literally everywhere. The big bang left electromagnetic radiation, which we know as CMB. We don't notice it in our daily lives, but it's literally here, under our noses. And if you had some kind of superhuman vision, you would see how everything around you shines with this dim light. This radiation is very important. If we hadn't discovered the CMB, we would never have found out about the Big Bang. 
Previously, scientists believed that the universe had always existed. There was no beginning and there was no end. It sounded pretty ridiculous to us now, but less than a century ago, people were absolutely sure of it. Stephen Hawking was one of the first scientists to guess that the universe did, in fact, have a beginning. The guy was so cool that he realized this as a student while working on his doctoral dissertation. But unfortunately, he had no proof. If there was such a strong bang billions of years ago, then where are the traces? Where's the proof? Laughed people who believed in the eternal static universe theory. But don't worry, they had the proof rubbed in their faces real soon. In 1965, astronomers Arno Pienzas and Robert Wilson discovered CMB, and that was the first grandiose proof of the Big Bang. It turned out that radiation was everywhere. We just didn't notice it. In fact, at first, Pienzas and Wilson themselves mistook it for the noise of a big city, or pigeons, or something else. For their discovery, which turned the world of science upside down, they received the Nobel Prize. All right, so people learned that they were surrounded by electromagnetic radiation. Then they started collecting more data about it. They accumulated more and more info over the years until they made this very map. This is a map of CMB temperatures. But while creating it, scientists discovered something unusual. Let's take a look at this map. It looks like a large and diverse pattern of cold and warm places. But in reality, our universe is quite uniform. All temperatures on this map are close to negative 455 degrees Fahrenheit with very little difference. All temperature fluctuations between these places are small and each tiny speck actually spreads over millions of light years. So everything in our world is pretty calm and stable except for one point, this cold spot right here. Astronomers first discovered it in 2004. First, it looked like nothing unusual. It's just a region where the temperature is below average for a couple of microkelvins. But remember, we're not talking about a small area. This is a giant cold region. It's literally billions of light years in size. Wait, the scientists thought, this can't be true. The universe should be consistent everywhere. According to our standard model, this cold spot simply shouldn't exist. But it does exist though. This isn't just some mathematical error, it's right there. So what is this cold spot and how did it appear? Astronomers have been trying to find the answers to these questions for years. Even now, we have only a few theories. So let's discuss them all. Theory one. Cosmic texture. This idea was brought up at the end of 2007. Then scientists suggested that this cold spot could be the hills of space. In other words, it may be a bumpy region of the universe, just part of its texture. But that's a silly explanation, so this theory was quickly discarded. Theory 2. The supervoid. This hypothesis was considered the most plausible for a while. It stated that the cold spot was actually the so-called supervoid. It's a terrifying dark place of our universe with almost no galaxies. And because it's an empty region with almost no stuff in there, it seems cold to us. However, this theory was refuted in May 2017. After carefully examining the cold spot, scientists found out that there were no signs of a supervoid there. Moreover, voids and supervoids, which actually exist by the way, are still very small in size. The cold spot is literally thousands of times bigger than them, so there must be some other explanation. And there is one, perhaps the most bizarre of them all. Theory 3. A Parallel Universe This controversial idea was put forward by cosmologist and theoretical physicist Laura Mersini Houghton. She suggested that the cold spot could be an imprint from the collision of our universe with a parallel one. Standard cosmology cannot explain such a giant cosmic hole, says Mersini Houghton. This is the unmistakable imprint of another universe beyond the edge of our own. Her assumption is based on the theory of the multiverse. This theory says that there's actually an infinite number of universes like ours in the world. 
they constantly collide with each other, giving each other a push, which creates a new big bang. So maybe the cold spot is a bruise from such a collision. For quantum mechanics, such crazy theories are pretty common. But for standard physics and our simple understanding of the world, this is earth-shattering. Of course, we need strong evidence. And Mersini Houghton's team has begun to work on it. Professor Tom Shanks from the Center for Extragalactic Astronomy at Durham University also participates in this research. The craziest sounding of the exotic models for the explanation of the cold spot, the multiverse is actually the most standard in terms of our current model of the universe, he wrote in one of his works. So, what evidence do we need? Well, our cold spot is located in the southern hemisphere. According to Shanks, if there really was a collision between two universes, we should find another cold spot, and it should be in the opposite northern hemisphere. If astronomers actually found it, this theory would be confirmed, and it'd become the first proof of the existence of a parallel universe. But it's not that easy. To find a second spot, we need the latest, highly sensitive telescopes. We also need to find out some info about the nature of dark energy, how it affects space, and, in other words, there's still a lot of work to do. Not so long ago, scientists actually believed they had discovered the second spot. Researchers from New Mexico thought they had found it in the Northern Hemisphere. But unfortunately, this is likely to be a mistake. The map these researchers used had a high measure of randomness, so it's possible that their discovery is just an accident caused by other voids. So, basically, we haven't found another cold spot so far despite careful analysis. But again, even the best modern equipment is not perfect, and it doesn't mean that there's no second spot. It just means that we haven't found it yet. But if one day we did find it, it could change the world of science forever. We'd confirm not only the theory of parallel universes, but also the famous string theory. It could explain everything that occurs in our world. But if this happens, we'll get even more questions than we already have. How did these two universes collide? How does it all work? So far, it's all just guesswork. We can't claim that the cold spot is a print from the collision of parallel universes. But we can't refute this either. Actually, we may never know the truth at all. But it's still interesting to strive for it. Now we all know that all planets are round. There are no square ones so far. And that's because of gravity. Well, roundish, at least, as not all of the planets have perfect proportions. But did you ever wonder about the shape of the universe itself? Is it also round because of the same forces? Well, not really. Based on what information we have so far, the universe is actually… flat? According to the principles of general relativity, space has the ability to curve. This opens the door for the universe to have three potential shapes – a flat plane, like a sheet of paper, a closed sphere, like a bowl, or an open saddle-like curve. This isn't just a matter of academic interest, you know. The universe's shape has direct consequences on its ultimate destiny. One cosmologist from Princeton University explained it beautifully. The shape of the universe is a kind of map to its past and a predictor of its future. The questions of whether the universe will keep expanding forever or collapse at some point, and if it's finite or infinite, all circle back to the question of its shape. Now, to wrap your head around this cosmic question, you need to understand two key elements – the density of the universe and its rate of expansion. Let's dig into this a little. Around 68% of the universe is made up of dark energy, while 27% is dark matter. <laughs> the rest, which is normal matter, if you'd like, makes up the stars, planets, and other cosmic bodies we're familiar with. When we talk about the density of the universe, we're referring to the quantity of normal matter packed into a given volume of space. Now, if the universe is denser, it also has more gravity. In this case, the gravitational pull can overcome the force of expansion. So the universe curls up into a sphere. This shape is known as the closed model, 
where the universe ends up looking like a gigantic cosmic ball. Imagine a world that's finite but without boundaries. A contradiction for sure. In this model, an adventurous explorer could travel forever through space, never bumping into a wall or falling over an edge. Alternatively, if the density of the universe is low and not enough to halt the expansion, then space distorts in the opposite direction. This results in an open universe with negative curvature that resembles a saddle. You know, like on a horse. Despite these two potential scenarios, most scientists agree that the density of the universe is just right. Which means it expands proportionally without curving. But what does it mean if the universe is flat? It doesn't mean we're living in an infinite sheet of paper. To understand it, consider these analogies. Imagine you're in a square room. Walk 10 steps to the next corner, make a 90-degree turn, walk another 10 steps, and repeat this process twice more. You end up back at your starting point, completing a square. Add another dimension to this geometry, since we're not 2D creatures, and whoopee, you have a flat universe. This analogy wouldn't hold up in a curved space. If you have a terrestrial globe at home, you might find it easier to understand this next experiment. Start by placing your finger at the Earth's equator, then trace a line to the North Pole, make a 90-degree turn, and return to the equator. Make one more 90-degree turn and walk back to your starting point. This journey only needed three turns, unlike the four turns in the flat universe scenario. Still struggling to understand? Here's another way to picture it. In a flat universe, two rockets traveling side by side will always remain parallel. This is in contrast to a closed universe, where the rockets will travel along the curve of space and eventually meet where they started. In an open universe with negative curvature, the rockets will gradually drift apart and never cross paths again. So is there a cosmological crisis at hand? It seems the answer to the shape of our universe is encoded in the cosmic microwave background, also named CMB, which is like the universe's fossil record. Over the past few decades, scientists have measured temperature fluctuations in the CMB to find almost no curvature, indicating a flat universe. Now, the concept of a flat universe is crucial to the standard cosmological model. However, in late 2019, scientists from a university in Rome published a paper arguing that current CMB measurements actually indicate we're really living in a closed universe. How did they figure this out? Well, they looked at how light behaves in the universe. Specifically, they analyzed how light bends because of the gravitational force of matter in its path. Either way, apart from this finding, there's nothing else that would suggest we're living in a closed universe. Most scientists believe this recent discovery is nothing more than a statistical anomaly. But if the closed universe theory turns out to be right, it would shift decades of astronomical findings. If the universe is indeed curved, it must be so large that the observable 93 billion light years aren't enough to reveal its curvature. It could be similar to standing in a fog, only able to see a small flat patch of land. Yet somewhere out of sight, the horizon reveals that we live on a sphere. As we continue to probe the cosmos, we might find that the apparent flatness of our universe is just a small part of a much larger curved cosmos. Its shape is just one of the many things we've yet to figure out about the universe. We can't quite put our finger on why the universe is even here, for instance. We do have some theories, but scientists are yet to be sure. It could be that the universe is like a pop-up, materializing out of an unstable nowhere land. Imagine the emptiest emptiness you can think of, suddenly churning out matter and energy in equal and opposite amounts that tally up to zero. For most of us, it's hard to picture that process. If we follow this theory, who's to say there's only one universe? We might be just one of an enormous collection, a so-called multiverse. For now, we'll just have to wait for the next wave of cosmic measurements to refine our theories. 
and for scientists to come up with hypotheses that aren't just mathematically pretty, but actually testable. Also, how could we possibly know all the secrets of the universe if we don't completely understand our own biology yet? I mean, if we did, we could, theoretically, solve all of our health problems, right? We might even be able to play around with our DNA, like this molecular Lego, and give ourselves naturally purple hair or red fingernails. Well, time for a reality check, as we're still struggling with this one too. Here's a great example, our microbiome. Our bodies, home to 10 trillion human cells, are also an active city for 100 trillion microbial cells. That's a couple of pounds of bacteria and other microbes, which we absolutely can't do without. They've set up shop in our bellies, lungs, noses, and every other hidden nook and cranny. We're like luxurious cruise ships for these tiny microbial tourists, and we still don't fully understand the implications of this symbiotic relationship. There are still a lot of things we don't know about planet Earth, either. We've only ever dipped our toes into Earth's crust, never venturing more than a few miles deep. Everything else is our best guess, from remote sensing and smart physics. Believe it or not, it took us an embarrassingly long time to accept that the Earth's crust is constantly shifting, like Jenga pieces. We only warmed up to plate tectonics in the mid-20th century. We're also still trying to figure out precisely how the planet's inner engine works, and how the swirling, conducting materials in the outer core create our protective magnetic field. Plus, with 4.5 billion years of geological chaos, we're sometimes better off studying meteorites or the surfaces of other celestial bodies for clues about our planet's history. Even our faithful companion, the Moon, is a bit of a mystery. Was it born from a colossal collision or some other event? We're still not sure. But hey, the fact that we still have a lot to learn is what makes life interesting, isn't it? That, and the thrill of actually finding an empty parking spot in San Francisco. Or maybe even your city, 